Okay, everyone. <laughs> this is about the fourth time I'm trying to get this video done with this new video camera. It, it's been an amazing journey, I'll tell you. I mean, it's been two weeks of all my electronics like blowing away. Computer problems, days on the phone with Dell. They still didn't totally figure out what happened with that. And then we got uh, into this camera. Couldn't do that. And then my, at the same time, my phone sent me a message that my uh, SD card was corrupted. All of my music, tons of music, were gone. A lot of my photos, gone. So then I had to wait three days for an Amazon new SD card to come. I mean, I could go on with the journey. I just finished three days of trying to transfer those files because a lot of things wouldn't work. But to the good news, I have a new Peggy pouch. I, you would have seen me unwrapping it in the first of the tried videos, but unfortunately, that video went up. When I turned it back on, I only had photos, no video. And I had tested it. Now, I tested this phone last night two times and played things back, and it was going. And I read the instructions again, and I was doing the same thing I did last time. So let's hope it works this time. I don't know. But anyway, the reason I got this beautiful Peggy bag, and it's Peggy Pappas, she has an Etsy site, is the workmanship on her bags is just lovely. And I was looking for a deck pa uh, bag for this wonderful new deck that I have that I, I reviewed a while back. It's a uh, beginner deck, but it's also for all people who have no memory, <laughs> like me. <laughs> uh, I can attest to that. My short-term memory was never good, even as a child. And I blame my mother because she was cleaning cupboards when, she, when I, she was eight months pregnant and fell. And I came a month early, so I always tell my mother, I was not fully finished, Mom. That's why my memory is gone. So anyway, uh, this one has the purple. Now this deck, I'll show you. i show you this because I did a video on it, but that's the lovely back on it. But it has reversals and it has others. So I have three decks like this. I'm going to keep two of them, and I'm, I already promised to give one away to somebody else who's interested in tarot. But you can get it in the purple. It comes in a teal, black. I think there's a yellow or a beige one. Uh, there's, I think, five different color choices. There's a navy one, so you can get it how you want it. But this is Peggy Pappas' beautiful bag. So go to uh, Etsy and see if you can find her. I'll try to put her name, because uh, the name of her business is different than her name. And uh, I've forgotten her name. I wrote it down and I forgot to bring it in here. But uh, anyway, there's my beautiful, beautiful bag. And I have a little, there's room for a crystal. I could put notes. There's lots of room in here for other things. And her bags come in various sizes. And she's also doing a, a new thing, which is a fold-up thing, I guess, for travel, and is beautiful. And um, you open it up, and then there's, there's a, I think, a space inside to put the deck and something else. Uh, but then when you fold it open, uh, you have a small uh, thing to do, maybe a three-card spread on there for traveling. So you might want to check those out with her. And she also does altar cloths and other beautiful things. So this is the scarf that I had that deck wrapped in. It was my, I think, $2 silk scarf from the Goodwill. And I had it in one of those lovely boxes that you can buy from China. I think you get five boxes for $15.99. And they're great boxes. But my end table in the bedroom, which is where it was like my office and my pharmacy for me and the dog and everything, I, don't, I didn't have room for it. So this suddenly made me have a lot more room where I could have my phone there and my water bottle, which I have always with me wherever I am. So that's that. Now I will go back to what I originally started the uh, video for, and it's this deck. Now I bought it. It was new to me when I bought it. And then I started seeing videos online for, about it. And evidently it's a very popular deck. But since I'm always looking for things to make a video about, you're seeing another video about the Muse Tarot. And I have her other, one of her other decks, and I just love her artwork. And I love the fact that she puts these in a, a nice sturdy box. So there's the box. And then inside it says here, There is magic in truth, there is truth in my veins, where my blood speaks in sooth 
and my mind has no reins. And that's the inside. Hugs. So let's see. Now this is a to me is a very feminine deck. You know, I've seen Simon Harrison do all his gorgeous uh, reviews of this amazing collection that he has of decks. And uh, he has, I think I've seen decks on him that are very male-oriented, but I don't think I've ever seen a female one. And to me, this is a female deck. I mean, you have to actually look at this deck to see that... Uh, there's no, em oh, no yeah, not an em there's not an emperor. No, no, there's not a king. That's right. There's not a king. Instead of a king, it is called, uh, let's see, the, the, uh, the muse. The muse. So I'll start this here. One of the cards just came out, so I have to put it back here. Because I, I, that's the other thing. Three times trying to do this video, every time I had to take the cards back out and put them in order that they were when I received it so I could do the, the video again. Please, God, let it be this way. Is Mercury still retrograde? <laughs> it's been acting like that for me for over a month. I tell you, 2020 has just followed me into 2021. Okay, so let me get back here. Okay, I said this way. So there we go. Cosmos. No, okay. Let me get it back here. I love these cards. I love the colors of them. The world cosmos. Okay. So let's see. This is the cheers. Okay, this is the last one here. So there we go. That was the last one. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because I'm I can't move the camera. That's the other problem. My tripod died. A leg came off and uh, I found a screw. But I just don't know where it goes. I, there's this little, I guess a bolt, little bolt, and then this little piece of plastic came off. I can't, f normally I'm great at fixing these. I cannot find where these came off. I know it came off of the top of the leg. So now I've got the camera budding here. So I'm not going to do a close-up from there. I'm going to have to just show the cards like this. I'm just going to hold them up and show them. But first I want to show you the beautiful book, Chrisanne. And in the back, she says, infused with a solidly eclectic spirit, the muse tarot will illuminate your punch, see your punch, your path toward inspiration and magic with its bright symbolism and powerful muse energy. The suits are recast as emotions for cups, inspiration for wands, voices for swords, and material for pentacles to deliver messages from the source of creation. The detailed guidance guidebook contains card meanings poetry and word prompts to offer that oh, offer insight into your readings while stocking you know, i'm having trouble i have macular degeneration so you have to excuse me reading this small print here uh let's see i'll start that sentence again the detailed guidebook contains card meanings poetry and word prompts to offer insight into your readings while stoking the sparks of your creativity ignite the muse within and then here's a picture of the lovely Chrisanne. The deck creator. Yeah, she says she has successfully kickstarted three unique card decks the Sacred Creator's Oracle, the Light Seer's Tar Tarot, which I have, I love that deck, and the Muse Tarot. And then you can visit her at themusetarot.com, is her website. So I'll give you just a very quick look here. I don't think she has, I, I didn't see any with the first looking uh, that were, there were any spreads in here. So I don't think, I don't think there are. Yeah, there are no spreads that listed in the things. But uh, here she gives you, let me see what she gives you here. Okay, so here's the devil and the tower. Let's see if you can get that closer here. So she gives keywords at the top, and then she, underneath that she has this thing called prompt. So for the devil, the prompt is slippery servitude, and then she gives you an explanation. And at the end of each of the cards, she has a little sort of poetic statement. And so for the devil, she says, who is the devil but my own choice? A capture and her strings. Who is the devil but my own voice? The one who never sings. I love that. I love that. So it's 
Nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's get started here. Uh, I'm just going to hold these in my hand and then do them up here. So, the fool. The colors are amazing in this deck. Oh, by the way, this is the back of the cards. Isn't that beautiful? Becca Hale, if you're watching, aren't these your colors, darling? I thought of you when I first opened this deck. I thought, oh, this is a Becca deck. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, now we have the Priestess. The choice of colors reminds me a lot of some of the advertising uh, graphics of the, like the 40s and 50s. You know, just beautiful combinations of oranges and teal, aqua, the empress. And again, the emperor is male. There are no men in this deck. So maybe the, maybe the lion <laughs> is a male, I don't know. But uh, let's see it here, Hierophant. And the lovers. The other thing that I noticed with this deck, and I'm doing a very quick went through for the video, the failed videos, is there's a lot of hidden things in here. You know, you first look and you see what's obvious in the artwork, but then on closer look and some of the work, you'll see background little sketches and things going on. I love this strength card. I think it's like one of my favorites. I just love it. And then the hermit, again, I love her choice. Uh, instead of having the hermit in the dark, she has the hermit in the light. And, you know, I, I know that from my teacher that a lot of these Indians, the Hindis, when they, after years and years of practice and meditation and yoga, they reach that level of enlightenment to the level of the third eye. And at that point, a lot of them will just go off in a cave high in the mountains and just tell everybody else to go away because they don't want to get any more karma. And they're at a stage where if they want to be warm, they can warm their body. If they want to be cold, they can control everything in their bodies. So they don't need to eat. They live on prana. In fact, in my trip to India, uh, I visited with a whole group, a group of us from the ashram, uh, this 130-something-year-old man uh, who they have in a compound to protect him because people have tried to kill him because of his power. It's amazing. But leaders from all over the world have come to see this guy. And he just lives on prana. And we were all freezing there in India. This was like December and January in northern India. And this guy comes out like in a diaper and waves and smiles so sweetly and has his friend, his little helper, give us all some prasad. I mean, and he's there just looked like he weighed 80 pounds. He was this little tiny, sweet little guy. Amazing experience. Okay, back to the cards. Okay, this is the uh, wheel. And justice. And we have a hanged muse instead of a hanged man. And again, the death card, there's so much in there. There's so much to look at in there. If I haven't been so busy with trying to finish all my projects, I would be spending more time really looking at this deck temperance. And again, we have a she-devil. And I like her take on the tower, too. I should have taken the phone off the hook. Okay. It's obviously a robocall because it, it ended in one ring. The star. Wow. Beautiful moon card. Wow.
and the sun. Mm. And 20, we have Awakening. I like it uh, in the same way I like her other deck, besides the artwork being beautiful. It's a very inclusive card, other than men. <laughs> I mean, she has the different races in here. Let's see. Here we go. Here is the world. Again, now with the decks, she uh, with the cards, uh, she doesn't have Ace of Wands. Wands are called inspiration. So here is the Ace of Inspiration here. Two. The three of inspiration, the three, three of wands, four of inspiration, and then we have the five of wands. And the six of wands, or inspiration. And then the seven. And the eight. And you can see where some of the cards actually carry the same energy that you have in a traditional right away. Like the eight of wands, you could see, see a lot of that movement that you would see in the eight of wands in a traditional right away. And this is the nine. Nine of wands, nine of inspiration. But I just love her choice of colors. All these sort of oranges and quiet orangey reds and blues and teals go beautifully together. And here's the tent of inspiration. And I love it, the smart lady. <laughs> she's getting the goats to carry most of the weight and she's carrying only one of the jugs herself. It's like, why should I carry all that stuff? <laughs> I, I got a kick out of that. Okay, now we have the page of wands. Night of Inspiration. And again, all the knights are just the horses and all different colors of horses. No, no people. And then we have the beautiful Queen of Inspiration. In the valley, in the, in Egypt. Yeah, I still kick myself that I never went into that Great Pyramid when I was there, but I, my husband was doing a special for HBO, so I got to get a free trip to Egypt, which is one of the few countries I've ever thought I really have to go before I die. And I stood in front of that Cheops, and I couldn't go in there. I found out later why I didn't want to go in there, but it wasn't fear. I just could not get myself to go in there, which did not make any sense at all at the time. Okay, here we go. The Muse of Inspiration. So that is the, the King of Wands. You can see, there, if you look at that card, look how much is in that card to try to you know, tap into. It's amazing. Okay, now we have the Ace of Emotions, so we are at the Cups, because the Cups are called Emotions here. So we have the Ace of Emotions. And again, with fish and other aquatic animals, showing you that then here's the beautiful two of emotions, again, underwater. I just love how much thought went into this deck. Three of emotions. And the thought is not just the artwork, but it's just you know, the color choices and stuff, but how she handled it, four of emotions. I mean, she took the four, but she made the fourth cup a place she's sitting in, gazing at the other three cups. And then you have the five of cups. So 
six cups. And then the seven of cups. And the cardstock is perfect in this, by the way. There's the eight of emotions. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. It's not too slippery. And then you have the nine of emotions. Ten of emotions with that beautiful mandala. I often use the, a mandala to do fixity exercises. Because at the ashram, that's what we would do. We would have the huge mandala and we just sit there for the longest time fixing on the center of the mandala. It teaches you to fix, a, be fixed when you're meditating on mantra. Page of emotions. Oops. It's a page. And again, look, there's like a hidden scene at the bottom middle of the, her outfit. There's like another middle scene to look at. That's what I was talking about, that there's so much more than what you think you're first seeing. There's a lot more to look at. That was the page of cups there. And then we have another beautiful horse for the knight of cups. And the queen of cups. And then we have the King of Cups. And so it seems that in all the cards where she has the, uh, the muse, who now was was the king in the old, old cards, right? It's uh, there's always two two women for the muse. Okay, and then we have the Ace of Voices, and the Voices, of course, are the swords. And we have the Two of Swords. And we have the Three of Swords. And I like the fact that she made this a gentle deck. Like she didn't have people getting gorged all through the body with the swords. At least I don't remember when I did the other two videos that failed. Okay, and then we have the Four of Voices, also known as Swords in her system. And the Five of Voices. and the Six of Voices. And we have the Seven of Voices here. And the Eight of Voices here. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, evidently the Ten of Swords is a little bit of sort of impalement, but it's not that she's impaled, but she's stuck in between them. So it doesn't look like a death card would, you know, where some of them are just totally impaled. You think, how are they ever going to survive that one? Okay, so we have the Nine of Voices or the Nine of Swords. And we have the Page of Voices, Page of Swords. And we have the Knight of Voices. Again, and just another beautiful, beautiful card again. Beautiful horse. Actually, that's not a horse, is it? It's like the Pegasus or something? It's, yeah, I don't think so. Let's see, then we have the Queen. Again, a, a beautiful choice of colors in there. All those blue grays and grays. It's just very rich. Wow. And the Crows. Appropriate since crows are supposed to be messengers, right? To have the crows be in the, the voices card. And then we have the muse, which is the king. And again, it's uh, two female dancers as the muse. There goes the phone again. 
Okay, now Ace of Materials. We finally had Pentacles. Ace of Materials. It's not a robocall this time. I'll have to remember to take that phone off the hook. Two of Materials. Or Two of Pentacles. Okay, Three of Materials. Three of Pentacles. Okay. And I love that she used just all these beautiful roses for pentacles. Okay, and then we have the six of materials. Oh, excuse me, that was the five. Excuse me, back again. I'm, my concentration is on that phone call. Five of pentacles, or five of materials. And the six of materials or pentacles. And then we have the seven of pentacles or materials. And we have the eight of pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles. This is a very gentle deck. That's the energy I'm getting off it. And look at the Ten of Materials. And the Page. And then a gorgeous Knight of Materials, gorgeous Black Horse. And then the Queen of Materials. And lastly, we have the Muse of Materials. So that is that gorgeous deck. I will tell you that it is easy to shuffle because in the other videos when I shuffle them, I never dropped a card. Let's see if I'll do it again. I never dropped a card shuffling them. The, the cards are sturdy, but they're not overly thick. You know, I don't, I don't feel like can't them. And they did ruffle shuffle, but I can't ruffle shuffle too much in the camera because uh, I'd have to hold it up here, and I, it just doesn't work. But when I was sitting here on, with the table, oh, I finally got some cards turned around. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, let me see the cards. See the card stock? It's like, to me, the, it's sort of like the perfect thickness. I could even take it a little thinner and be okay with it. Because the way I shuffle, I, I like to have them on the thinner side. Because I do overhand shuffling as well as ripple shuffling. So let's see if this is going to show up here. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, it is shuffling. Okay, so this is the beautiful, the muse, by... Chris Ann, and there are a lot of, of other videos uh, I've since found out <laughs> on YouTube covering this beautiful, beautiful deck. But as I said, I need some content. <laughs> you know, that I'll have to re learn to really read the cards. I was so embarrassed the other day, I was on a, a, a live feed with uh, Robin. <laughs> He invited me to be part of this feed, and they're all the other people are reading cards. So I thought, oh my God, he's going to ask me to read cards. So I shuffled the deck that I had because I only have one near me right away. And then, idiot, I hold the thing up and I say, oh yeah, this is the uh, the something of pentacles. And then the two people said, no, June, that's cups. I think that was was. But I was so nervous, you know. I used to be on the camera. I used to belong to a little theater group. I've done commercials for you know, but part of my living is a model. Uh, as long as I have a camera on me and I know what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm fine. But put a camera on me and I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> Sorry, Robin. <laughs> don't ever do that to me again. Or at least tell me beforehand you're going to do it. But anyway, so let me pick a card here. For the day. One fell out on its own, but I'll, I'll leave that there just to see. Okay. Okay. Okay, Lord Michael, 
spirit. Let's have a card for the day. A card for everybody to think about for the next 24 hours or so, okay? Okay, let's see. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, two came out. And I was trying so hard only to get one. Okay, I'll do the first one. It says, let all your actions today confirm the abundance in all areas of your life. Yeah. yeah I think gratitude is the greatest prayer. I remember my teacher saying, pray every day and be thankful for what you have, even if all that you have is the abundant sunshine that day. Pray what you have. Always affirm the positive of how you want things to be. Because, you know, just being here in a body is a great gift. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a lot of challenges. But this is the only dimension where we can have catharsis that causes us to grow. Because when you're sitting on a cloud and you don't have to eat and you don't feel pain and stuff, you don't have that impetus. But you come to third dimension and it's like, oh my God, <laughs> it's not the world I want to get off. You're forced to grow because of the catharsis. It's one thing after another. And if you're a person who has decided that you want to enlighten in a lifetime, instead of getting two little incidences a month, you're going to get two or five a day that you're going to have to deal with. So you learn after a while, you just have to laugh at it all. You know, what can you do? Okay, so this is the second one. It says, find time today to be in recognition and gratitude for the glorious gift of your life. Oh, interesting. They're, they're both in there. Okay. Uh, and focus on all the things that are right in your life. Yeah. So here we have it. But interesting that uh, both of them are uh, about abundance. Abundant, abundance and gratitude. They all, I always pick the right cards. I don't pick them. They pick them. But it amazes me because there's four, there are 44. When I wrote these cards years ago, I called them the Road to Ascension cards. And, uh, excuse me. But every time I pick cards here, I, I, every two or three times out of five maybe, I'll get some of the same cards. And they always seem to be appropriate for the situation. Because, you know, today on the news they're talking about, you know, more of those terrorist uh, crazies who uh, invaded our capital. Uh, we're emboldened by that, so we have to be aware that more dangerous to come. And so it's just getting people into fear, you know. And, uh, I mean, what is people's greatest fear? You know, if you're not afraid to die, then just live and be happy. <laughs> Okay, so everybody, I thank you so much for staying through this long video, if you did. And I just want to thank you so much for coming, and I'll try to be back sooner. If this video goes through, and I have finally figured out how to really tape with this new Canon Vixia camera, uh, I'll be back because I have a couple more old decks here that are new to me, but I haven't even opened them. They've been sitting here for months and months and months. So thank you so much for coming. I love you, I love you, I love you. Be at peace, be in joy. Be safe and be happy. Namaste, everybody.